Hey everyone, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dehre Bagga and today I'll be showing you one of the interesting games that I played last week and I was playing as black here and played the Karukan defense which starts off with c6. I'll just quickly go through the opening ones. It goes for like c6, d5 and then you would try to place your bishop on f5 which is a very active square for the bishop in the Karukan defense. And then you can develop your knight uh, on f6, move the center pawn to e6, creating a small pyramid in the center, which is pretty solid. Uh, and then probably you can find squares for your other knight as well, which could probably be a d7. And the dark square bishop can come on uh, d6 or d7, depending on the situation. So as, as you can see, we are not going for the center attack or control immediately, but we are just trying to develop our pieces in a better way so that we can probably attack or defend in the future. But yeah, that gives a lot of control to you uh, and your opening. So probably try it out and it, it, it does work for me and I'm trying to improve it further. Uh, and if you have any doubts related to Karukan, please feel free to reach out to me. All right, before we start off with the game, I would request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you never miss out on videos. Uh, I'm putting up one video daily and it's a promise that I will never miss out on that. You can continue to learn something from the, these videos as I try to be as instructive as possible throughout. All right, yeah, let's start off with the game. Uh, it started off with uh, pawn to c4, the English opening, uh, my opponent preferred playing here. I responded with c6. He plays d4 now, of course, because he got the chance to take control of the complete center. So d4 is a pretty good move for white here. And I played uh, d5 uh, now. That's a uh, that's a move to restrict him for from pushing his pawn forward to d5. Now White has basically got three options here. He can take on the pawn on d5, but after he does, uh, it is like it becomes the Karukan defense exchange variation had he moved the e pawn rather. So uh, it it becomes it doesn't give White an advantage because uh, the center will be completely challenged by both the pawns, both the players by one pawn each. So no advantage to white. Uh, white here can even push the pawn forward. And in that case, the situation becomes a bit closed. But uh, his pawn is too much advanced here. Of course, he's not even uh, taking control of the c4 uh, further. And, if, uh, and, he, and the third option he has is to develop the knight. And that's probably the best move uh, because uh, he's developing the piece rather than just playing a piece multiple times in the opening. That's never a good option. So, but here he chose to play pawn to uh, c5. And I believe that you must have encountered such situations uh, multiple times in your games. So uh, that's a good way now and you can understand how to handle these situations. So I first went off with development of my bishop uh, to e5, though computers suggesting that go for the center uh, initially only, trying to challenge the center pawn because as soon as you challenge, Again, if he takes, he's hanging on uh, the c5 with the dark square bishop, eyeing it, uh, and we take control of the center as well. But I preferred developing my bishop first. That's what I did in the game. He plays uh, knight to c3. Uh, now, uh, continuing with the development of his pieces, minor pieces, and here I went off with e5. Now, generally, when I was explaining the opening, I told that we can we generally push our pawn to e6 in the Karokan. But now, since we have got the space in the center, plus uh, the pawn on c5 is something which we can, uh, which we need to remove from here, just to make sure that our bishop is free to uh, go on uh, and even pin the knight in some cases or develop to a good square. Uh, this pawn is also controlling the d6, if you notice. So my bishop cannot go to d6 now; it has to go to e7 to be developed. So I got some opportunities. So also this opportunity to push the pawn forward to e5. That's what I did, and he didn't go for the capture, but just defended the pawn uh, with with the pawn on e3. Uh, here I played the bishop back on the g6. The idea is generally the next move of white would be to develop the bishop on uh, d3 and try to exchange the bishops. Now I don't want to lose my bishop uh, here because uh, I don't have any support of the bishop. Now I could have moved the pawn to uh, g6, but then again. Uh, it spoils my pawn structure if I take back after he takes. Uh, but in this case, if he takes, I can take back with the uh, h7. And that opens up the h file for the attack. 
when he castles. So that's the plan. Uh, and here he develops his bishop on uh, e2 rather. I develop my knight on d7. And now he brings bishop to uh, g4 here. Now again, I would like you to focus on a few things here. He has moved his bishop twice already. He moved his c pawn twice already. So he has most, he has already uh, wasted a couple of moves in the game and is just move number seven. Uh, that's not how you should be uh, opening. You should be always trying to make sure that you're moving your pieces uh, not more than once uh, and just try to develop your pieces faster. As you can see, black is ahead in development uh, and that's what matters in the initial part of the game. Now I played a uh, knight to f6, attacking the bishop. So he has to defend. He defends with the pawn on h3. Again, uh, his, he has a couple of minor pieces still lying uh, on the original squares. And here I thought of just breaking the pawn chain because that's the only advantage that he has for now. So I played pawn to b6. And whenever you play b6 against such a pawn on c5, you will generally see the move uh, b4 falling up. And now that's pretty obvious because if I take now, he can take back with the pawn and the pawn chain remains intact. Uh, so I thought of handling this situation after I removed the bishop from the game. So I took on the bishop uh, and he takes back with the pawn. Now, generally I said that I, you don't need to open up the h-file for the opponent, rather open up your h-file after he takes from the bishop. But now my h-file wasn't about to get open in this game. Plus, uh, since I have... Uh, still got my bishop back on g6. It will control the h7 pretty nice. So even in, if I have to castle on the king side, uh, I'm pretty much safe. And sometimes you don't even need to castle. You can just proceed with your uh, game uh, plan, whichever is suiting you at that point of time. So now I went with a good way to uh, attack the pawn uh, and break this pawn chain by moving uh, to a5. Now the idea behind a5 is simple. If you take my pawn, I can take back uh, the C pawn first. Now, if you have to take the C pawn, I can take back with the bishop. And still, the pawn on A file is hanging. And I don't see a good way that it can be defended. Plus, that developed my bishop with a tempo. I just removed your pawn chain. That's pretty much controlling. Uh, so that's the idea behind playing A5 here. And he probably saw it and thought of playing... Uh, bishop to a3 here that was a mistake uh, rather computer suggesting that he can play b5 uh, push the pawn forward so that now if i take c takes on b5 he gets to take back with the knight uh, here of course i will take on uh, the pawn as well after he takes my bishop gets developed but in this case at least uh, white has got some play with his uh, knight uh, he can probably get the queen out or maybe the bishop can also now start to develop. Uh, the rook can come on the c-file and do something about it. Uh, but rather he chose uh, to bring the bishop. Let's go back. Yep, he got the bishop. And I took on the pawn on b4. And he has to take because his couple of pieces were hanging. So he took, takes with the bishop. Uh, and I take the c-pawn now, eliminating the threat. He takes with the pawn, which is the right move, but then I take with the knight. Now, the idea behind taking with the knight uh, was that uh, A, if he takes, I take back with the bishop. I got the bishop pair in the game, and I have uh, a very good uh, extra pawns as well, so nothing to be bothered about. I have good pawn structure on the king side. I can castle to safety and probably win it from there easily. Uh, or And second thing is, if he doesn't take, now that's a good probability that he doesn't take, and he wants me... Uh, he wants to take on the f, uh, the dark square bishop uh, after I remove the knight from here so that my castling gets spoiled. So he played uh, the move a3 here. And as soon as he played that, I placed my knight on the wonderful square, which was d3. Now that comes with a check, so he has to move the king. And the other option after it is I can capture on the dark square bishop. Uh, and I win at least a pawn in this case because after I... Suppose he moves his king to... Uh, f1 here, which is the best move as well. Uh, I can take on the bishop, and he takes back with the pawn. I take the rook. He takes back with the queen. So lots of exchanging happening, and then I take the pawn as well. 
so overall, I took on a lot of stuff, exchanged a lot of stuff. I've got extra pawns. I've got the bishop pair. Nothing to be complaining about. His king is probably not doing anything. His knight and rook have never come into the picture right till now. So black is completely winning here. Uh, evaluation bar also says it's 3.99 in favor of black. So yeah, completely winning. Let's go back with the main line where he rather chose to move his king uh, to... Sorry, I just maybe get through. He placed his king on uh, d2 here rather. And that gave another four king option. So I took on the pawn on uh, f2, forking the queen and the rook. And then he saves the queen. Of course, he has to. I took on the rook. He develops his knight now, uh, finally, on e2, uh, trying to also attack on my knight. Of course, the knight would go here. So I just took on the bishop, at least, so that I can castle. He takes on the knight. I took the other knight as well, just trying to eliminate pieces from there as much as possible. And peace up. Uh, so there's no point wasting time. He takes with the, knight, uh, the king here. Uh, which computer says is a blunder it's mate in two here probably i didn't find that i believe or oh, i did oh i found the mate and that's rare and that i find mates correctly so yeah i moved king queen to a5 he placed his king on uh b2 and then i took on the pawn and that's that's checkmate no other options for the uh, king here because the light square this diagonal is completely controlled by the bishop uh, and the other diagonal is controlled by the queen and he can, of course cannot come on the rank uh, or the file so leaving king with no other option so yeah that was a quick mate uh, interestingly if you see some uh, op something op some opening like this where the opponent pushes for pawn to c5 very early in the game probably that's how you break it you just play uh, b6 and uh, sorry you just play b6 and followed by a5 so that generally breaks your the pawn open spawn chain and then you are pretty good in the game i hope you liked the video and it was interactive as well uh, do let me know your feedback if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do uh, and press on the bell icon as well thanks for watching and sharing uh, your feedback as always would love to uh, continue posting these videos and uh, making sure that something instructive comes out as always all right Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.